Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mowers. In today's episode we're going to take a little look at the Cocast 35SK lawnmower that I had come in the other day, the one with a cylinder and the drive wasn't working. I have since repaired that lawnmower but now it needs to go forward and have a full service. So if you have a Cocast 35S, Cocast 35SK or a Suffolk Punch style um, cylinder machine then this is a video for you and I will show you how you can do a service from your own, own house rather than taking it into a shop to do it and save yourself a bit of money. Before we get down and dirty though, I have got a quick little announcement to make and um, I have a parcel come through from my Amazon wish list. This come through from um, James Colden. He sent me, um, I sent him some stickers over a little while ago and um, in return, he's actually purchased this little gift off of Amazon for me. Well, not a little gift, it's a big gift actually. It's a set of ratchet spanners um, from size eight to 19 with swivel heads as well. Um, so absolutely fantastic. Thanks for that, James. Much appreciated, buddy boy. They all come in super, super handy. I do have a set, but it's only about 8 to 12, uh, but it has misses as well. So this is now I've got a complete set all to myself, and I shall hang them up on my magnet strips, and uh, they'll be put to use straight away. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty, and let's check out this Quocast 35SK cylinder lawnmower, and let's give it a bit of a service. Right, here's a Kawasaki uh, Quocast 35S with a Kawasaki lump on top. <clears throat> Let's get rid of a few of these guards out of the way. We don't need those. Um, so what I'm going to be doing with this machine is an oil change. Um, change the spark plug, air filter, and it wasn't actually running at 100% right. When I fired it up last time, um, the throttle doesn't work properly. It doesn't really, doesn't really work up and down as it should do. <clears throat> and there's a bit of a hunt to it as well. So the carburetor will be coming off to it, just have an inspection and possibly a clean because it's not, not doing what it should be doing. The blade is pretty good. I may have to come back and back lap it at some point, but until I get it running right, I, won't, I don't want to sharpen the blade with the cylinder up until I get it running right. So first thing I'm going to do is just go off camera, start the machine, let it run for two or three minutes and then drain all the oil out of this machine. Right, so as you can hear or not hear, uh, that's the engine ticking over. Oh, I've got it on fast and that's, it's got a bit of a hunt to it. If I idle it down, it'll, it'll actually cut out, okay? That's not actually idle. That's idled down right there. So um, if I idle it down too much, um, it just cuts the machine out. So what I have noticed is uh, if you leave it on a half choke, it doesn't actually run too bad. If you take the choke off, then you, get, you start to get this hunting noise. So there's the hunting. Put it back on a half choke and it runs a bit better, so it has got a fuel problem. So that's on idle. And as you can see it's not it's not very happy where it needs to be there. So it should it should idle a little bit better than that, but it shouldn't be missing like it is. So Let's turn it off, and we'll find the off button. There it is there. Let's turn it off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drain the oil out. Now, there's two ways to do the oil on these, and the first way is to, if you don't have the extraction pump like me, there's a little tiny um, bolt at the back here. You, with a, a rag and what have you, you can tip the machine backwards like so, okay? Undo that bolt at the back, and then drain the oil out. That, that's, how you, that's how you do it. But for me, I'm quite lucky. I've got an extraction pump which is not what everyone's got. Now the machine's been warmed up for three or four minutes, it'll all be a bit thinner. Just want to check the, uh, the oil on the machine. Let's get a bit of tissue. And you've got a minimum and maximum line there to go to, just, just like on a car. Put it all the way in. And then all the way back out again. Take an oil reading and it already is absolutely bang on. However, this machine, I don't know how long it's been sat, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the um, take all the oil out of the machine and then uh, refill it back up. Now, there's two ways of, of knowing. Some cylinder engines are different, okay? If I don't have an oil dipstick like this one, um, what you do is you fill the oil back up until it meets pretty much the end of the threads if it doesn't have a dipstick. If it does have a dipstick, you go to the dipstick, okay? But without a dipstick, just to the bottom of the threads will be sufficient, okay? 
So that's that. Uh, let me get it all drained out whilst it's nice and warm, and I'll come back to you in two ticks. Okay, so all the oil is now drained out of that machine, which is good. Um, next thing to do is to remove the HT lead. We want that off. And you'll find inside there, there'll be a long reach spark plug, which we'll now take out. Take that out. Plug's a little bit warm because it has been uh, has been run up. I want to get a little bit of copper slip or anti seize compound, just so um, when I put the new threads back in, you always need to be a bit wary of when you're um, putting in uh, a new spark plug, especially if you have just run the machine up, okay? Because um, there's a high chance you could cross thread it, so always go careful. So the old plug that's come out is a BPR6 HS, and I'm putting in a BPR6 HS, okay? So that, that's what come with it. You can look it up on, online to see which one you need, and just a little tiny bit of copper slip, anti-slip compound. Just be careful not to get it onto the actual element itself. The only reason I'm putting it in, in here is just to stop it from seizing up in future, that's the only reason. So just be careful not to get it actually on the element itself. You just want a few bits on the threads, that's all. And then that goes into the hole, just like so. And just gently do it up by hand first, get those, those threads running. Don't just wind it in with a, a socket first off, because we want to get those threads running. Otherwise you'll come a bit unstuck a bit later on. If you're not sure, just back it off a little bit until it starts to turn, but I can see that's starting to turn now, so I'm happy with that. So before, the reason I'm doing the service first, before I do the carburetor, is because it might pick up with having uh, a new plug put in it, okay? Not all machines need to have a carburetor clean, um, but it's best to uh, change the plug first and the air filter, just so you can, you can then eradicate um, any issues, okay? It may not need a carburetor clean as of yet, but I'm, I'm suspecting that it does. I'll leave the HTE off for now. Next thing to do is to undo this little tiny um, tab just here, and that will release your air filter box. And you always tell by the air filter how, how long ago the last service was. Okay, so it's not too shabby. But this machine is being sold as a as full service, so it's not too bad. It's a little bit dusty, um, but uh, it's, it's pretty much done to its day. Um, it's not doing what it should be doing, so take the air filter out. And I've got a new air filter here. You can buy these online for around about uh, £6, I think they were. And that goes back into there. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to put some oil back into this machine up to the desired uh, level and with a new spark plug and new air filter we're then going to go forward and um, run the machine back up. And I'm hoping it's actually going to cure the, the issue but what I'm suspecting of is because the throttle is not working quite right, it's not idling right, uh, it made a bit of adjustment here um, to get to make it tick over properly but it has got sort of a little bit of a hunt noise to it so um, I can't sell it as fully serviced, fully working, if it's got a little tiny hunt, because people do pick up on it, and uh, they like their machines to be running A1, and nothing leaves my shed unless it's running A1, so. Um, let me um, get some oil. Um, standard SEA30 oil goes into here, into the front. Let's get rid of that, uh, that oil extractor. So standard SEA30 goes into the front of the machine where the dipstick is, and you just fill it up to a desired mark on your dipstick, and as I say, if it doesn't have a dipstick, then what you do is you fill it up to the, to the bottom of the threads, um, and that should be sufficient. So normal SEA30 will go into this Kawasaki engine, um, that'll be sufficient. So let me get that done, and I'll come back to you in two ticks. Right, that should be enough. Let's have a little look at it, and it all should be clearish in color, with a tint of brown, and mine is. It's just a little tiny bit low, just a, a smidge, and I'm, I'm talking, I'm not being critical, but it is what it is. It will drop a little tiny bit as well as uh, the machine warms up. It doesn't want a lot. That should be more than enough. Just to top it off. It's just been sat for two or three minutes whilst uh, I've been mucking about. Right now, let's try that now. That should be where it needs to be.
Yeah, absolutely A1 on the mark. Nice and thin, as you can see. Brand new oil. So that's good. That's what it needs to be. So that's what I want to do is um, I want to fire the machine back up now and to see if that's actually stopped the hunting issue. So um, new, new spark plug, new air filter, all change has been done. Very quick, very simple. Let's now turn the machine on, put it onto full revs. It might need a bit of choke. So that's half choke on full revs. And it's not hunting, so I've the needle not moving. Take it off. It's got a very, very small hunt to it. There you go. It's even even moving here. doesn't like to idle. So I'm afraid the carburetor's gonna have to come off. So that's how you service a machine, but obviously we need to go a bit further now and to take the carburetor off. Okay, to take the carburetor off, we wanna turn the fuel off first. Um, whilst we're mucking about, and off is over there. Let's turn that fuel off. And then we're gonna remove the air filter now. Now the last carb I did on one of these, um, I couldn't get the float, float pin out and actually damage the carburetor. So uh, you need to go a bit careful. So air, air filter off, air box off. And you've got a couple of 10 mils in there. Let's grab a 10 mil bar and socket. That's a 10. And we're gonna undo these retaining bolts. Very quickly. There's one. Two. Let me get a magnet tray in so we don't lose no bits. Air filter box will then come loose. There's a little tiny uh, clip there. Just make sure the tab goes upwards. There's a wash. It looks like the wash or tabs on there as well. There'd be a gasket on the back, and also there's also a, uh, a valve um, venting pipe as well. Goes into a valve cover, that comes off. And looking at the state of the carburetor, it is actually quite dirty. It's not hideous, but it is a little bit dirty. Just give the old carburetor a bit of a rock, just to um, ensure it comes out. What have we got on there? I need to remove the, um, the fuel line. So let's get a set of long nose pliers in. A set of medical forceps. I will now want to pinch off the fuel line, although I have turned it off on the tap. I may have to clean the tap out as well. Um, fuel line off here. So just knock that back a little tiny bit. Give that a little bit of a rock as well. That's well on there, that is. We don't want to be mucking about with that. How much slack have I got there, Mick? Yeah, I've got plenty of slack if it does break. And it has actually got a break in it. Which I've just noticed. So I'm going to get my um, craft knife. There's a little tiny split just underneath there. So I'm going to bring that off to around about there. There's plenty of slack there to be had. So next what you want to do is lift this throttle um, governor's arm up. That just lifts straight up out. Not like the other ones. He says. Let's try and get the spring at the same time. Get hold of the spring and unhook the spring first. And get hold of your throttle arm. I think it's a straight one, I'm easier it is, yeah. A little, just a little straight one, that's no biggie. And then you can then take the carburetor out. And the carby comes off. Lots of dirt in amongst here as well. Bits of uh, grass and what have you. So all this will we'll, we'll take off later on. But here's your carburetor. Let's get it over to the, um, to the bench and have a little look to see what it looks like inside. But 
judging by the inside it's a bit dirty it's not not too bad but we'll see let's put it over there have a little look right let's have a little look inside this carburetor then it's just got a small hunt to it and when you're when you're selling machines on you need to make sure they uh they're running right uh it's got a bit of light on the old situation as well just to improve that uh roll the old sleeves up and we get some gloves on so we don't contaminate the carb any more than what uh what's needed um and we've got this little carburetor shall we let's see how we're getting on good good so here's a carby um want a fill it, uh, flat headed driver we also want a, um, a socket it'd probably be about a 12 mil on here is that a 12 mil let's have a look uh 10 mil on there no it's not 12 mil i have a 10 mil already out that's why 12 mil on here and uh, let's just crack this bowl. If it'll come off, I might have to zap it with the old, uh, the old impact. Now these carburetors are expensive. Oh my word. So we don't want to be uh, breaking anything. So I need to get me impact. I don't like to use impacts on, uh, on carburetors, but uh, you can't get in that bowl without getting that off. So, don't have it on the too high of setting. You can put it in a, in a soft jaw vise to put a leverage on it, but it's just got a bit easy. So I'm just gonna shock it, like so. Nothing extensive. So I've got a bit of a broken washer there as well. Let's see how that's come out in a minute. And we can see already there's a bit of gunk in there already. Always have it over the tissue. So we'll see what we've got. Nice gentle tap, just to break the seal. There it goes, it's just changed, changed noise. There it goes. Try and keep the O-ring intact if we can. And there you go. So this is why I inspect carburetors anyway. There you go. So there's no way that would have run um, as is. And as you can see, also got it looks like it looks like coronavirus. Yes, yeah, coronavirus. Got coronavirus on there as well. Okay, so there's no way that this carburetor would have run as is. Okay, which is uh, nice. So we know we know the cause. Okay, so we've got lots of uh, stuff just down here, congealed stuff. Uh, let's now try and remove this pin. Now this pin on the last one of these I did, uh, this pin did not want to come out for love nor money. So a pair of long nose pliers, let me fetch one of those. Eventually want another whole kit down here so I don't keep moving about. And let's now see if this pin's gonna come out. And the last one didn't, I had to punch it out and uh, really, really, really don't wanna be doing that again on this one. I don't know why these are so tight in here. I need to get under that needle and seat. That's the issue. Now the last one I had to punch it out, and I broke the um, I broke the arm off of here. So I need to go a bit careful. Let's try and take this main jet out first. Now I do actually have someone bought me um, some main jet screwdrivers. That's going to be too big to get in there, I think. Yeah, uh, and that is a small one. So I use my use my homemade one. There's a little tiny jet just in here, which has to come out. There it goes, that's coming. That's, that's something. Let me just figure out what I'm gonna do with this, uh, with this float. I'm able to get in behind it. There's only a very, very small hole in that, in that there. There is a, a tube in here as well. There's a tube that's just dropped out. It's nice to see. Little tiny bit of something just on there, but the holes are pretty clean. Uh, there's another little tiny, tiny little jet just here, absolutely tiddly, and that was well seated. Let's take that out. 
Oh, I can't get my hands on it on a pair of tweezers. Another little jet there. That's your slow runner. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this uh, this float yet because I cannot get it out. So I'm not I'm not going to risk it for a biscuit and snap this carburetor because these carburetors are about 140 pounds for these. So sometimes best left alone. Uh, the main problem is going to be the jets. But what I'm going to do is tip the carburetor upside down. Let me get some WD-40. And all I want to do, tip the carb upside down and then run some fuel into there, some WD-40. And I want to see it coming out of that, out of that needle and seat, which it is now, starting to come out of there. So we are a bit of a pickle on these. I will try and get it out, but uh, it looks like it's got a little bit of a bend to it by the looks of it. It's bent on this side here. So I'm just removing any excessive dirt. That's um, going to be an issue. That's your overflow. Well, some of you may agree, so I think you should take that out. But if it don't come out and you break the carburetor, you know, it's, it's not, not, not worth the effort. But as you say, this this here, that's got a little tiny bend to that. A little tiny bend. And I don't know why these are so tight. I've always found these to be tight on here. And if you snap it, it's game over. You can heat it, but you've got the plastic to worry about. I can't get it to turn, so I'm going to leave that be. I'm not going to muck with it. If it's got, if it's got to go through the cleaner... And that's what that's what we'll have to do <clears throat> at the end of the day. But sometimes it's it's just best left alone. So I'm gonna get my toothbrush out. That's not the one I use indoors. And uh, have a general clean just to loosen some of this other gunk up. And then a general clean again. Just knock all that dirt off. Tip it up to one side so it all drains off. Go back into there again, because that'd be a good idea. And there. And then back into that one. Tip the carburetor up so the float drops down. That's coming out of there nice. See it coming out of here, look, just out of here. See that? That's running. So that's good enough for me. We'll go with that. Let's put the carby down to one side, let that drain out. I've uh, got a little tiny screw here to remove. Now this, on my last one, dude, this was massively tight as well. Oh, my word, why do they do it? Uh, Phillips screwdriver, big one. Now, what you don't want is for, is for that to snap. Because that's where you flood your carburetor from to bring your fuel down. It might go into a vice. We should see. If this snaps, we get this game over. So if it, this is a problem, you know. Let me put it down here. No, I got it. That moved. Yeah, that moved. Take that out. Well rusty. Not as in Rusty Rooster, but you should channel. him. He's a good guy. Run that through there. Now, lots of people comment on my channel, Mick, why do you use WD-40, not carb cleaner? It's just a personal preference. It's just what I use. Always have done. I've always used WD-40 and never really had much problems with it. It's not as harsh compared to uh, the carburetor cleaner. Not harsh on, on their O-rings and stuff. So a bit of wire wool in here, just to uh, get all the contaminants out of the bowl. Make sure you swill it out well afterwards. I'm happy with the bowl. Bowl's nice now, nice and clean. So that can go to one side. Just want to give that a little bit of a clean as well, of a wire wool as well. Just get some of this, uh, this sludge off. That spring's actually st stuck on there. Just to clean the spring up and the end of this up, which is where it goes in your flooding 
part of your carburetor. Clean that up. That's all good. Uh, the main jet itself is not plugged, but uh, it's, uh, it's a million miles away from, from uh, not being brilliant. So we'll go with that one there, I think. Oh, that might be a bit too big. Yeah, it's too big. Let's go. I think it'll be that on there. Then. So a set of um, gas file tip cleaners. Stick that in. And all we're doing is that we're not actually filing. We're just applying sideways pressure. So I'm just lifting my finger, just applying sideways pressure onto the walls of this main jet. I don't like it there. That's better, see through it now. So I'm not actually filing the jet away, just literally applying sideways pressure. And now that main jet is now free to run. As it should do. That goes onto a clean rag. Uh, we've then got your tube, your pickup tube, or emulsion tube. This doesn't actually look too bad, to be fair. I think it was just picking up stuff through the main jet, what right, was in the bottom of the carburetor, as you saw. That horrible sludge. And there's, uh, there's four or five holes in here. Just go, go through the whole lot with your pipe tip cleaners, which can be bought on eBay for about three or four quid. Just have a good clean round every single hole there is. Right, that's all done. Let's bring all the bits and bobs back in. Tube. Nah, bits and bobs. Right, so first one to go in will be uh, the flooding screw. And that wants to be well seated and then backed off. So well seated and just back it off half a thread, okay? It doesn't need to be tight. Next one to do is to put your tube in and the long spout goes in first, like so. And then your main jet, that's nice and clear now. Now they're a bit fiddly on these ones because uh, that sits down quite low. So just take your time with it. You don't want to cross thread it. So get it in there half right. And eventually it will just find its, find its little place. So just take your time with it. Can't really see, that's a problem. I think we've got it. I think we're now moving. Yeah, we're moving. Once that main jet's all the way home, it wants to be well seated, but not overly, not done up overly tight. So just well seat it. Another shot of WD-40, right down the center of that main jet. And that's running where it should be. Got a little tiny idling jet to go in next. So around here, shot a WD-40 in there. Just to clean that up. And then your slow running jet then goes into that one. And that again, that's well seated. Like so, we're happy with that. Now this carburetor, um, it's going to go on uh, this way onto the machine. So there's a machine on the block side there. When you put this on, you want to have this carburetor uh, so that the um, the flooding screw is around, is around the side front where, where the handlebars are. Yeah, so put it up against this little tiny pipe here. That should be sufficient. We can now run that bolt back in, which has been cleaned. And again, make sure you don't cross thread that. We're going to nick that up. I can't find my socket that I had to do it up, so I need to find that. That's me, uh, me half inch or 12 mil. It'll be about here somewhere. Do that up, and then um, 
back out to the machine and then uh, we'll try and fit the carburetor back on. Right, carburetor. I found my um, socket, it was on the impact. I was hunting for it and uh, yeah, that's where it was. So um, what have we got? Carburetor to go back on, um, fuel line to go on as well, which we're doing in a minute. And we're gonna just gonna push the carburetor into place. My well, cable's right in the way. Lift the governor spring up, put that into place there, that just goes on. And a little tiny spring, which goes on just over the back, just like so. That all sits onto there, gasket. Careful, careful. It goes onto there. And now we can bring this um, fuel line back on, which was split, but there's plenty of room there to negotiate. That goes onto there. Pair of pliers would be good. <clears throat> Squeeze that all the way up and make sure it's clamped on, which it is. We can now remove the um, fuel pliers. Now there could be a problem with this fuel tap, but as of yet, we, we'll figure that out. <clears throat> we shall see. Um, now we want to get the um, the air box in. It's got a little tiny breather hose going on the back, which has come off of the, um, the overhead valve cover. That goes on. Sink your air box in. Got a little tiny um, cover here to put on as well. That goes on like so. And now before going any further, so I want to, um, when you choke this machine, you want to make sure that it's actually choking fully over, which it is on the manual side. So that's good. And then we want to um, get your 10 mils. Wind them in, just hand tight for now. Like so. And then just just nick them up. I've got to be on there really tight, just nick them up so it's got a good seal. Do it too tight, you'll strip your old threads off. Right, now remember what I said about having um, that flood screw around um, the other side so that's so you can gain access to to it so now i'm going to turn the fuel on on the tap which is there and now what i can do is undo this flood screw and you'll see fuel dropping down here okay so that's perfect so now we know we've got fuel in the system <clears throat> carburetor is now full bought, bought some fuel down so that's good <clears throat> we can get our air box and a new air filter so all this can be done from home, you know? You haven't got to send it into a shop to do it. You can do it for yourself, as long as you've got the, the basic materials, you know, just basic tools. That just sits into there like so. Pull the cable up. And it, once it goes into place, you'll, uh, you'll be on a winner. Like so. That does that. <clears throat> I'm out. Do that up and then I'll meet you outside and we'll go for a run up and see if we haven't um, fixed this hunting issue. I may have to adjust this throttle yet, we shall see. Um, I may have to adjust the idle as well, <clears throat> but we shall see. So that's a quick carburetor clean on, uh, on this Kawasaki engine um, and uh, it was warranted because the carburetor bowl was full of sludge. So that's why I do them. Um, if you didn't do that, that machine would be coming back to you in about a week, less than that. And the, uh, the person you sold it to won't be very happy. So that's why I do them. <clears throat> Let's take the machine outside and uh, we'll give it a fire up and uh, see if we haven't cleared this hunting issue. Hopefully we have. And then we can uh, just do some cosmetic stuff to this machine just to make sure to, it looks nice, ready for sale. If need be, we'll back lap the blaze, but that'd be in a separate video. Right. She's a bit misty this morning, it's still very early. So let's turn the machine on. It's already on choke. Let's give it a bit of revs and see what doesn't happen now. Oh, it's not on choke, beg your pardon. So once, once the idle adjustment, let's put it on choke. If 
That's half choke. Let machine warm up a touch. No hunt. It's gone. So I'm going to have to adjust the idle. I think. I know it idles. Idles well too. Yeah, happy with that. Cut the blades in. drive. Yeah, lovely. Fix. Not hunting at all. And that's how you do it. So there you go, there's the um, service on the um, Crocast 35S with a Kawasaki engine on it, new spark plug, all change, um, new air filter, and also a carburetor clean, which is much needed, and that machine is now uh, all up and running. I will test it a bit later on, um, see how it cuts, and if it requires it, I'll either get the cylinder sharpened or I'll backlap it with some grinding paste, which I have just hither. Um, so that's super, super cool, super happy. That machine was bought um, as a, a running machine, but um, not working fully. So the drive and the um, cylinder wasn't actually working and uh, wasn't running quite right, that was running. So a bit of tinkering about, that machine is now all up and running and good to go. If this is your first time you're watching Mixed Mows, hit the subscribe button, whack your bell, set notifications to all. That way you'll be told one done a video or two I'm on my Saturday night wiki live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. I look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mows very, very soon. But until then, people don't forget, much more importantly, Take it easy.